concerned about having a woman in charge of the paper, that she doesn't have the resolve to make the tough choices. Thank you, Arthur, for your frankness. Let's do our jobs. Find those pages. One of the things in production design that I enjoy the most is setting the stage for the scenes that are going to take place. But the deeper level to that is setting the stage for the emotions that are going to get played out for us by the actors and directors and the cinematographer being able to capture it and, and have chances to show the scenes from a perspective that actually means something, to, hopefully, to the audience. So when people walk into this set, one of the things I've enjoyed is seeing that they can suddenly immerse themselves right away in a reality that everywhere they look, it's the reality of the 1971 newsroom of the Washington Post. This is a devastating security breach that was leaked out of the Pentagon. The most highly classified documents of the war. The Times says 7,000 pages detailing how the White House has been lying about the Vietnam War for 30 years. All of the um, sets that we're doing in this movie are trying to be as accurate as they can. Unfortunately, we did have a lot of research, so that Bradley's office really was as transparent as it is and something that you can see from the outside. And that Kay's was much more hidden away in the beginning in the executive suite. And we have that documentation from uh, the 60 Minutes reports and all the photos that we saw seen. Um, but the really important aspect of the movie in relationship to uh, Kay and uh, Ben Bradley, for me as a, as a set designer, is, is to see the way they complement one another. And so there's that kind of coming together around the newsroom and the process of being both the editor and the publisher of the paper, which is what you see reflected uh, here in this, in this newsroom set. To make this decision, to risk her fortune and the company that's been her entire life, well, I think that's brave. If the government wins, the Washington Post will cease to exist. The interesting thing for me is that being old enough to have been around uh, when All the President's Men came out, I assumed that that's what the set would be because that was the historical set that they made at the time for All the President's Men. It turns out that that was the location um, and the way it looked in the Washington Post in 1972, but our story is a prequel to All the President's Men. It's what happened before that time and it was actually in a different building, a different office. So we went in with the assumption that it would end up looking like All the President's Men with all the colored desks and everything. But instead, we actually found the pictures that showed us what it looked like ahead of that time, which was a more uh, dated uh, look and also much more of a hodgepodge, the way you sort of see it here. It's not uh, color-coded and it's much more the end of an era, the beginning of a new era, which in a sense is what the whole movie is about. It's about the end of an area, an era of, of trust, I guess, in, in, in government and the role of the press was basically to be in sync with the government. What are you going to do, Mrs. Graham? 